welcome to Sales Smarts. This week we're talking about the compass. Now a compass has been used in sailing for hundreds of years because it tells us where we're going. Right back at the beginning of sailing, sailors would use the compass to travel all the way across the oceans. Nowadays, we're still using the compass in events like the Vendée Globe, where they sail all the way around the world. And Pip Hare is doing that right now, sailing around all of the oceans. But I'm not exactly sure on all of the fine details. So this week, we've got our technical expert, Karen, in to help us with the compass. Karen, what actually is a compass? Yeah, good question. So it's usually a round object that contains this really small lightweight magnet that's called a needle. Um, this needle is balanced on a pivot point which allows it to move freely um, and one end of the needle is usually marked N for north um, and this end of the needle always points north. Interesting. So how does it actually work? So the earth is like a giant magnet that creates its own magnetic field. Um, the north end of a compass is always attracted um, to the earth's magnetic north pole and the needle will always point to the north. So wherever you find a compass, wherever you hold the compass, it will always find north. Um, and the good thing with that is if you can uh, find north, which a compass will, um, you can always orientate yourself and, and travel in a specific direction if you would need to. Great. Well, the thing is, Karen, I'm not about to sail across the oceans. I'm not as good as Pip Hare. So who else is using a compass? So some professions still use a compass. So people in the building and construction industry, they will still use a compass. Uh, the military will often use a compass, so they've got a bit more of a special, very, very accurate one. Um, and people who work in mines uh, underground, they will also use a compass where there aren't any um, stars, there's not always reception, um, and so they will use a compass to help them. Um, also, loads of aeroplanes and ships will still use a compass um, as navigational instruments. Um, additionally, people also use them recreationally and for fun. So if they're out orienteering, if they're out walking, they, um, they would use a compass to help them uh, not get lost and to be able to find the, the right way to the path or to the, uh, to the stamp if they're doing orienteering. Great. Well, actually, now, now I think of it, when I'm sailing and windsurfing, sometimes I say things like, it's a northerly wind today, or the tide is moving from east to west, or, or even later on, the wind is going to build from the southwest. So what are all the different directions on a compass? Yeah, good question. So to begin with, there's four compass directions. They're the main compass directions that we use the most, uh, north, east, south and west. Um, and we sometimes might help remember them by saying never eat shredded wheat, uh, naughty elephant squirt water. So our four main ones that are the building blocks of the compass rows, um, which is the, the compass directions, um, is, is north, south, uh, east and west. They go in a clockwise direction, north, east, south and west. And then the, the next layer of compass directions where we can add a, a bit more accuracy um, is that we have compass directions that sit between those four quadrants between those four um, compass directions. So if our north, south, east and west are at say 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock for north, east, east, south and west, then in the diagonals between them we get uh, northeast, southeast, southwest and northwest. And on top of that there's another eight compass directions which would sit in between uh, those but you're more than welcome to go and find them out. For this purpose we're going to stick to just the eight. Okay, wow. Okay, so that's some really good detail. So if I wanted to find out, you know, which way my bedroom window faced, how could I find that out? Yeah, good one. So the easiest way to start um, without a compass uh, to begin with is by finding the sun. Um, now, it's not always very easy on a cloudy day, so you need to wait for a sunny day. Um, or you need to have a think about how the sun shines into your house. So one of the, the best ways to, to do, which we kind of always feel, is, is where the sun is first thing in the morning. So one room in your home will have the sun that shines in. Now, in my house, um, this, uh, the sun shines in through the lounge window. So if we're watching television, uh, which is in front of the window, maybe unhelpfully, the sun shines straight into our eyes, and then we can't really see the TV. So in the morning, we shut the curtains because the sun is shining in. Where does the sun shine into your house in the morning, Jake? So it definitely shines in through my bedroom window. I know that because 
I have curtains and a blind because otherwise it just wakes me up really, really early. So um, yeah, definitely shines at the front of my house straight through that window. Fab. So wherever the sun shines in the morning, that will be east. Uh, and then 180 degrees directly opposite um, that, that initial direction will be where the sun sets. And that will be west. So wherever the sun shines in in the evening of your house um, or your home, that will be west. And so once you've found east, if you stand facing the east, you turn left 90 degrees. So you turn left a right angle. And that is your north direction, which you can totally work out from inside your home um, or outside your home. And from there, you can work out the other directions. Um, and if you have a compass in your home, someone may have one, you can just hold it flat and it will point to north. And from north, you can then work out your east, south and west. Um, and nowadays, loads and loads of phones have got an app with a compass. Um, so, uh, so you can also use that. And where you hold that will point to north and you can work out the other compass directions. Wow. OK, sounds like I've got some work to do. So is there any field work that I could do to help me learn a bit more, maybe practice this? Yeah, absolutely. Whenever we're learning about geography, field work is really important for helping us uh, uh, become more uh, familiar um, and more confident with the vocabulary and with what these things mean. So, Jake, have you got a pen and paper? I do, yes. Brilliant. OK, so what I want us to start off by doing is drawing the simple compass rows. The simple compass rows is where we do a, do a cross and, a, and add an arrow yeah, to the top. Uh, and then that will be our north. Then we go around 90 degrees to the right to say where three o'clock would be, and that's our east. So you can label that. Uh, our, our compass point facing down will be south, and then our, our compass direction 90 degrees round where nine o'clock would sit on a clock will be our west. What you can then do is add in the other compass directions um, that sit in between them. So we've got our northeast, our southeast, um, our southwest, and our northwest. Then for each compass direction, um, what you've got is you need to orientate your, your, uh, your data recording sheet. So we need to orientate this to where the sun rises and where the sun sets. So it might be easiest to go, for example, when you go and do this afterwards, uh, go into your, your bedroom. I'm going to go down into the lounge and I'm going to point this at where the sun shines in in the morning. What you're then going to do is you've got four questions. OK, what I'd like you to write down, first of all, is what is immediately outside your home? So the other side of the fence um, or the other side of, um, of the garden or the other side of, um, uh, you know, where you go out onto the road, what is in each direction? So for me, if I'm thinking about what's the other side of the fence from the back garden, that's another house. Now, I know my neighbours, so I can write down exactly who that is and who lives in that house. And I'm going to do the same for each of those compass directions. What is immediately outside? Then I know that to the west of my house is a road. To the north of my house is a path. To the south of my house is, uh, is Peter. And to the east of my house is Libby and Henry. OK, so the first one is what's immediately outside of your home. We can then build another layer onto this. So then we can write down what's in our local area. So if we were a bird and we were going to fly east over Libby and Henry's house, what are we going to get to a little bit further out that direction? If we're going to uh, cross over the road and travel a little bit further, still in our local area, what would we find if we carried on going as the, as the bird flies in that nice straight direction? So we do that then for our local area. And we might get to the sea in our local area. We might get to some farmer's fields. We might get to a Tesco. Um, we might get to a different supermarket. You know, we, we, we're just looking at what's in our local area. The third layer, and you can do circles around this. You've got circles that are showing kind of the distance as we get further away. We're then thinking from where we live in the UK um, or anywhere around the world, what else is in our country? So if we travel east from here, what am I going to get to? OK, and this is thinking about uh, your whole country. So there might be things that are really far away. There might be things that are really close. You might get to some a sea or an ocean quite quickly. You might get to some mountains or hills or a national park or a city or a capital city or a town. You know, there might be a motorway there or a train track. Um, so what are you going to get to within the within your country? And then the fourth layer is what are you going to get to in the whole world? OK, and for north, 
If we keep going north, Jake, where are we going to end up? North Pole. Absolutely. Okay, so we can put that one down. If we're going to keep going south from our country, where are we going to get to? South Pole. Exactly. Okay, so we can add in specific countries, specific oceans, maybe specific landmarks. Um, and so you're going to add that to your... Um, to your data recording sheet so you are then working out if we travel west from our house and we just kept on traveling what are we going to find now you can check your answers for the first two points by by looking out of the various windows or going outside and, and just seeing what's in that direction um, you can also use something like google maps and you can center it on your house um, and you can put it onto the satellite view where you can see um, a little bit more detail um, and you can see if you were right from your house did you work out what was the uh, what was accurately located in those directions? Um, and then for the for the for your country and for the world, you can also use Google Maps or you can use an atlas or you can use the globe um, and you can use some of those other um, geography resources to find out if you were correct or not. And a final thing that you could do is you can make a quiz for others in your home to see if they got you know the right things to see what they think is in those directions because. Um, People, especially for their local area, get a bit uh, disorientated as all the, the roads and the houses um, might fill that space in. So, uh, yeah, there's a nice bit of field work for you there. Great. Yeah, that sounds really exciting. I'm probably going to have a go at that right now. Well done, guys. It's time for you to get active at home. So get your activity sheet and start noting down what is north, south, east and west from your home. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we'll see you again soon. All the best.